greetings. <laughs> Thrilled to see so many people here today. Uh, we actually do have some more housekeeping stuff to go over, but before we do that, <laughs> sorry, as luck would have it, I have jokes for you. <laughs> Fella walks into a bar, sits down, orders a beer, starts drinking the beer, hears a voice say, I like what you've done with your hair. Guy looks around, doesn't see anybody that obviously said that. Takes another sip of beer. A couple minutes later, hears a voice, I like that shirt. Guy looks around, still doesn't hear anybody that obviously is talking to him. Takes another sip of beer. You're a handsome man. Now the guy's really disturbed. And he calls the bartender and says, I, I gotta ask, do you hear, is there somebody talking that I'm not aware of? And the bartender says, oh, it's the nuts. They're complimentary. Yes, that was all right. Uh, housekeeping stuff. We have an all-day workshop coming up this coming Saturday. I'm going to start talking at 9:30. I'm going to end up probably around 4:30. We're going to go through lessons two through seven in the book. So opening bids and first responses, rebid by opener and responder. Then we'll go over takeout doubles and overcalls and opening no trump along with statement and Jacoby. Uh, it's five bucks plus um, if you're gonna get uh, pizza, I'll collect for that at the time. It's probably four additional dollars. We have dates for the new workshops. And I say we have dates for the new workshops. <laughs> And actually, when I say it's the new workshops, it's not the new workshops. It is the new class. Now, on Sunday, September 4th, we are going to have a trophy game for Ooh. players. Yes. Woo! Woo! With players with fewer than 20 master points. So those on you on the back row uh, aren't going to be eligible to play. But we actually have a trophy. Uh, and it will be presented to the winners, and it will be engraved, and it's all that fun stuff. Um, we have a date for the day we start all over again. Okay, it is going to be Sunday, September 18th. That is going to be the only day where we aren't going to have a regular scheduled bridge game, because everyone in the room is actually going to be learning that play goes clockwise, high card wins a trick, leads the next trick, so on and so forth. Okay, so important dates. We'll have flyers here within the next couple of weeks. Um, so if you know somebody that you think would enjoy learning how to play this game, um, love to have them come. Are you doing Saturday session again? Saturday, uh, the Sunday evening sessions and the Saturday sessions tend to go in concert. I do them both every six months or so. So I will probably be starting the Saturday workshops either in December or late, either November, or December, or January, depending on how the holiday schedule falls. But yeah, the, the Saturday workshops tend to be fun. However, for those of you that have not figured this out, um, most lessons that I've done are available on YouTube. Okay, they are linked on the richmondbridge.net website. So if you've ever wanted to see my lessons on Stamen or Jacoby or the Saturday workshops that you've missed, if you go to the richmondbridge.net website, uh, up at the top there's a link to Friendly Bridge, and under that it's Ed Talks. And you'll have it's probably 30 different um, YouTubes out there. Thank goodness for my 17-year-old son and his YouTube channel. 
And again, Govin to Ryan for actually videotaping this and taking the time to listen to all the jokes that I've told, none of which are particularly funny. Uh, so yeah, uh, certainly thanks to them. Um, questions on housekeeping stuff? All right, we, today we're going to talk about something exciting, and we are... Uh, before we do, I'm going to do a little bit of review. The person in front of me opens one diamond, and it's my turn to bid. Okay. There are three things I can do. Person on your right? Person on my right. What did I say? You said in front of you. I didn't know if it was your partner in front of you. Yes, the person on my right opens one diamond. There are three things I can do. Okay, I can pass, I can make a takeout double. Takeout double tends to be short in diamonds, be about an opening hand, and have support for the three unbid suits. And the third thing I can do is overcall. Okay, and overcall shows the suit that I'm overcalling, if I'm overcalling in a suit, and a certain amount of stuff. Okay, so I'm when I overcall, I've got one suit. But let's say I've got a hand that looks like this. Now, those of you that have heard me talk about overcalls know that there are three reasons that we overcall. Okay, one, I think this might be our hand. Okay. Second, I want to give my partner a good lead director. And the third reason for overcalling is taking up bidding space. Okay, the more bidding space I take up, the more effective my overcalls tend to be. And when I say effective, what I really mean is get in the opponent's way. Okay, I'm making it more difficult for the opponents to describe their hand to their partner because they want to have a conversation uninterrupted. So if I interrupt, that tends to be a good thing. And if I interrupt and take up a lot of bidding space, that tends to be a better thing. Does that make some sense? Okay, so today we are going to talk about two specific overcalls where I can show two suited hands. Okay, the first is called a Michael's Cubit. So who here has never played a Michael's Cubit? Oh my goodness, that's a lot of hands. All right, so if I am trying to make a Michael's Cubit, how would I start that sequence after my right hand upon open one diamond? Two diamonds. It would probably be some sort of Cubit. Okay, hence the name. I'm, so when I make a Michael's Cubit, I'm going to Cubit. Two diamonds. I don't think they know better what a Cubit is. Well, and that's, and now we do. Okay? <laughs> a Cubit is when I bid the opponent's suit. Okay, because ordinarily when, if they're bidding diamonds, does it make sense for me to be bidding diamonds and want to play a hand in diamonds? It could happen, but it's unusual. So most people assign a certain meaning to a cubit. Okay, and some guy, and I apologize to this person, who probably is passed on by now, named Mr. Michael, sorry, I don't know his first name, came up with a good meaning for this cubit. Okay, they open a diamond, I say two diamonds. I want my partner to understand what I'm doing. Okay, the meaning that he assigned is partner, when I make an immediate cubid, I am showing a two suited hand with five cards in all of the unbid majors. Okay, I have a two-suited hand with five cards and all of the unbid majors. So they open one diamond, I say two diamonds. 
I have five cards in all of the unbid majors, which are hearts and spades. Okay? So, in essence, one diamond, two diamonds, I bid a heart spade. Okay, I bid both suits at once. I've taken up a full level of the auction. Okay, and I've told my partner that I have hearts and spades. Pretty darn good description of this hand. Okay, the other option, if I don't play a Michael's Q bid, is overcalling a spade and then coming back and bidding hearts later. Okay, and maybe you can use the qubit for something else, but that only works if you have something else to use it. Yes, ma'am. Um, is it possible to do the Michael's qubit with a major indicating that you have, or like if they're bidding a, a major, it indicates that you have the other major, or should you overhaul? Okay, so, it, and uh, for the Michaels Q-bid, when I make an immediate Q-bid, I'm showing a two-suited hand with five cards and all of the unbid majors. So this <coughs> equals one diamond, two diamond equals the majors. Okay. If they open one heart and I say two hearts, okay, I've got a still. It, it, we're still playing Michaels Q-bids. I still have a two-suited hand with five cards and all the unbid majors. So this would be spades and a minor. Okay, one heart, two hearts. Excuse me, one heart, two hearts. Partner, I've got a, I'm making a qubit. Okay, so, and whoa, okay, what's he doing? We've talked about this. He has a two-suited hand with five cards and all of the unbid majors. Okay, so he's got spades, and he's got another suit, which by definition is a minor. Okay, so similarly, ah! so you always have to have two five card suits. I always have two five card suits. Do you need opening count? Um, do you need opening count? That's an excellent question. It depends on how good your partner's sense of humor. is. <laughs> okay, and I'll tell you why. Okay, the auction's gone one diamond, two diamonds. What do I think my partner is going to do if the next person passes? Pick a major. Pick a major. And if he picks a major, which one of us gets to play the hand? He does. He does. So the debt. So just how good of a hand I have to have depends on your agreement with your partner. It may be influenced by vulnerability. It may be influenced by what you had for breakfast. Um, I would encourage you to have at least six or so points to do this. Uh, have I ever done it with less? Yeah, depending on the vulnerability. Because again, it takes up a lot of room. Okay. This bid makes it more difficult for the opponents to figure out how, where they belong and how high they belong. Okay. So you don't have to have a certain amount of stuff. Um, in general, I'm not going to have... Let's talk about the continuation. So I've got one diamond, two diamonds this hand. I've got a 10 count. And the next person passes and my partner bids two spades. Okay. Did he hear me bid both majors? He heard me bid both majors. And he said, that's great, Ed. I've seen you play Michael's Q bids before. I think we belong in two spades. So, and I've got the 10 count that I had up there before. Do I have a good way to describe my hand after and my partner, partner bids two spades? And your partner is just promising to three. So uh, my partner on a good day has three. <laughs> okay, on a bad day, 
he's got five five in the minors. Okay, that's a problem playing Michael's qubits. I'm hoping that my partner has a major. He usually does, and sometimes he doesn't. I'm five five in the majors. He's five five in the minors. So the moral of this story is, okay, if your partner just takes a cheap preference to two spades, you need to have a darn good hand to bid again. Good definition of a darn good hand is about 17 points. Okay? okay. So two spades, does my partner need any points in his hand? Nuh-uh. Okay, I just told him to bid. Partner bid something. Please bid a, you know, bid a major because I've got 10 of them. Okay, so if my partner bids two spades, I should have about a 17 count to go on. Now my partner isn't limited to bidding two spades. He could bid three spades or he could go to four spades. Okay, three spades would be invitational based on a partner having about, I'd anticipate my partner has 10 points. If he's got more than that, I'd expect him to go on. If he's got less than that, I'd expect him to pass. And four spades says, let's try to take 10 tricks in spades. Yes, sir. A two-parter, the first one is immediate qubit. Um, one diamond, pass, pass, two diamonds. Is that, would you call that immediate? Ah, uh, that would not be immediate. One diamond, pass, pass, two diamonds. Most people still play that as Michaels. Okay. It's good to have the discussion. So, you know, whoever you're playing with, yeah, I've got a takeout double to make a general takeout double. And if I've got a takeout double and a big hand, I can make a takeout double and then bid something. So it kind of makes sense to play it as... Michaels, but it's good to have that discussion. And then secondly, um, you're talking points. Are we talking at this point, is it high card points? Since your partner is going to bid a major for you, and you've got 5-5, five, five, or are you going to, can it be relative value points? It, it presupposes that you're 5-5 five, five in the majors. So yeah, it, it's, it's really high card points, and it's really high card points in your majors. <laughs> If I've got this hand, queen X of diamonds probably doesn't add anything to me. Singleton queen of clubs probably isn't a plus value. So it's points in your two longest suits. Good question. Other questions? Yes, sir. What if you have a 6-5? Same thing. Okay, I, I just have more than I promised. Yes, sir. And is there an upper limit where you would no longer use the person making the mic? There really isn't because when I make my Michael's cue, I want to get you to bid something. And after you, I want you to pick a major, <coughs> tell me which one you have. With a 17 count, I'll take another bid. Um, so yeah, there really is no upper limit to uh, how big your hand can be. With a 19 count, I will make my Michael's cue bid and take another bid. As opposed, and even with a 19 count, there's really no better bid to show 5-5 five, five in the majors. A takeout double doesn't get it done, and overcalling in one of the majors doesn't get it done. So I, I would encourage you, 5-5 five, five in the majors, to play a Michaels Q bid with no upper limit. Does that make some sense? Yes, sir. So the responder to the Michaels, if he has zero points, is he still required to respond? Um, only if he wants to play with his partner again. Because <laughs> seriously, one diamond, two diamonds, I'm bidding diamonds. I've got five cards in the majors. Okay, I'm anticipating that you, his partner, will bid again. Because I, with this hand, have no desire to play two diamonds unless and this is a big unless if your partner happens to have a seven card six or seven card diamond suit passes yep two diamonds is a good spot to play ha ah, you get to play with your five five of the majors and you are going to think that i have fouled up 
but I have. I really want you to play two diamonds. Good luck, play well. And I'm probably going to excuse myself and go to the men's room and <laughs> play this game. Good question. Uh, other questions? All right. Um, yes, ma'am. I'm still a little confused on the full count. So you're saying that you can do my QBS as long as you have five, five in the majors and the diamond is what you're going to Q. Yep. Um, on as little as six or seven points. Yep. But then the person, your, your partner, is sort of required to bid. Yeah. They could be doing that on zero points. Yeah, and, and how cool is this? I have <laughs> a no, no, I have a six count. My partner has a zero count. So what do the opponents have? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Thirty-four points. And what have I done? I've taken up two levels of the bidding. Okay? The opponents have slam somewhere, and they have to figure it out. This is not a bad thing for you. Trust me. Okay. Now, I've got one more thing I need to point out on Michael's cue bids, and this is somewhat important. The auction has gone one heart, two hearts, pass, and it's my bid, and I have this. So one heart, two hearts, what does my partner have? Spades and a minor. Do I want to know what his minor is? Yeah. Okay. The way to find that out is by bidding two no. Partner, tell me what your minor is. Okay, and he will. Whichever minor he has, he will tell you by bidding it the next round. Okay. Does that make some sense? Yep. Any questions about Michael's qubits? Yes, ma'am. Is that an alert? Nope. Qubits, no. by definition, are not alertable. However, you may find yourself in some game playing against people that you don't know what their bid means. Okay. If you care you are allowed to ask. Okay, so the fact that um, the auction's gone one, uh, one club, two clubs, and there's no alert, I'm still allowed to ask the person on my left, what does their two club bid mean? And they will tell me. Partners five, five in the majors with an undisclosed number of points. Okay, would be that um, definition. Good question. Other questions, yes ma'am. Suppose your partner does that and you don't know what it means. Can you? They ask you. Can you say, uh, I'm, "I don't know." You, that it, and then uh, what honesty is a good thing to do. But then what happens? Are they allowed to ask if the other you person? No, and if if you don't know, you don't know. Okay. Okay. When I make a bid, my partner is required to describe what our agreement is. If they don't know, they don't know. And your partner will probably have a big frowny face on when you say that. I don't know what our agreement is. Okay. Uh, was there another question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Whatever your cue bid in a major, that tells your partner that you have at least five in a in a minor, but not necessarily five in the other major. Actually, it says I've got five of the other. A Michael's cue bid, by definition. Five car in two suited hand with five cards in all of the unbid majors. Okay. So one heart, two hearts, spades is the unbid major, so I've got five of those, and I've got a five card mine. Okay, but in the example that you have, you didn't have five. Oh no, this is the responder. Oh, okay. I'm just sitting here minding my own business. My partner's got spades and a minor. I really want to find out what my partner's minor is. I don't care what his spade suit is. No, excuse me. I have no interest in playing this hand in spades. I want him to tell me what his minor is. Okay. So I will bid two no trump, and he will tell me what his minor is. All right, I've got five minutes left to go over unusual no trump, which is all I need. If you did the Michaels and then and this person had the same, would you maybe repeat your spades if you had six? Nope. 
Yeah, it would I uh, maybe, maybe, but no. <laughs> All right. Now, the unusual no trump. Who here plays unusual no trump? Gosh, both of you. Okay. Okay, so the auction's gone one heart. Now, what would a usual no trump overcall be? A regular one no. With a regular no trump overcall, I will bid a regular one no. What if I have an unusual no trump? What would that sound like? Two no. Two no. Okay. This is also shows a two suited hand. Now, vitally important, if you are playing Michael's Cubit or unusual no trump, it is vitally important that your partner is also playing. Michael's cubits are unusual no trump, because what does this sound like? 20, 21 points. 20 or 21 points, that's what it sounds like to me, undiscussed. So, if you have 20 or 21 points, I'd encourage you to start with the double and then bid no trump, okay? Which frees up this bid to show a two-suited hand with five cards in the two lowest unbid suits. So I always have you know what my suits are. One of a major, two of a major. I've got five cards in both minors. Okay? One club, two no trump. I've got diamonds and hearts. Okay? One diamond, two no trump. I've got hearts and clubs. Okay? I've got five <coughs> cards in all of, in the two lowest unbid suits. So partner knows what my suits are and can do something intelligent. Same point requirements apply. Be good to have some cards in your two long in your two long suits. Okay, vulnerability may affect your bid, okay. and your partner will do something intelligent. Yes, ma'am. Is it alertable? Not alertable. What do you mean, same points? I mean. Same points for a two no trump? Yeah, same no, and again, I'm taking up a boatload, of, a, a lot of room here. You meant same points as a Michael's Cubit. Same points as a Michael's yeah, Cubit. Right. So right. whatever you play for a Michael's <laughs> Cubit, you can do the same number of points for your unusual no trump. And really that's an agreement between you and your partner. I'd encourage you to have at least six points. Questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. Can you just put a visual under your, your suits to sure. support that unusual two-no trump? Okay. One heart, two-no trumps. Partner, I've got five cards in the two lowest unbid suits, which here are the minors. Okay. If the auction is one diamond, two-no. What are the two lowest unbid suits? Okay, one diamond, two no. The two lowest unbid suits are clubs and hearts. I'd have something that looks like this. Could be more points, isn't going to be significantly less points. All right, I see y'all have cleverly arranged yourselves in groups of four. It is time to play bridge. Right? Uh, yes, sir. So neither the Michael's QB or one point, 20 or 20 or 20 or 20.